Hello guys, I am Zohair from India. In this video, I am going to share how I got into University of Toronto in Canada. If you haven't watched my college decisions reaction video, I suggest you do. You can check the link to it in the top right corner and in the description below this video. With that being said, let's get started. First, let's talk about my journey and why I applied to University of Toronto. So in high school, I did the IB diploma program, which left me with no time to think about college applications. And as the pandemic hit, I thought this was the end of universities. So basically I forgot about my applications. Soon I was in my gap year without knowing I was in my gap year. But after getting a decent score in the IB diploma program, I decided to give a shot to the top universities in the world and universities that offer 100% scholarship for international students because college and studying abroad is ridiculously expensive. In addition to being one of the best universities in Canada for computer science, UFT also had a fully funded scholarship program for international students. So I applied and luckily got in. Talking about my program choices, my first choice program was computer science co-op at UFT Scarborough and my second choice program was computer science mathematics and statistics at UFT Mississauga. Fortunately, I got accepted into both the programs and received some good scholarships, which I'll talk about in one of my next videos. So stay tuned for that and do subscribe the channel to not miss that one. Now let's talk about what University of Toronto saw in my application that other universities didn't and decided to give me an offer. The first and the single most important factor for my acceptance to University of Toronto was my academic performance. From my experience, I believe that good high school grades are crucial for your application to UFT or any other Canadian university focused on academic performance and excellence. For University of Toronto, every student is required to submit self-reported grades, which are the high school grades and the official final exam scores. In my case, I submitted my 11th standard result, which was a 35 out of 45 in IB and my 12th standard result, which was a 38 out of 45 in IB. I also submitted my final IB diploma score, which was a 43 out of 45. Trust me, I was more shocked to see this result than you are right now. For the IB students out there, I took math, physics and English B as my HL subjects, chemistry, business management and Urdu A literature as my SL subjects. I scored a 7 in all of them except chemistry for which I scored a 6 and TOK and extended essay, I scored 2 bonus points out of 3. So 7 multiplied by 5 gives us 35, 6 plus 2 gives us 8 and adding them together gives us a score of 43. Tasty. These scores are pretty good and unexpected. But listen to this very carefully. You don't need a 40 plus in IB or 90 plus in any other exam. In fact, you can see that mid to high 30s in a program's required subjects are enough for admission into University of Toronto. I strongly recommend you to check all the prerequisite subjects as well as the minimum required scores on the requirements page of the UFT website to get a better idea of what subjects and scores you need to get in. Now, as an international student, there is one more thing you need to submit, which is to prove your command over English language, English language proficiency test score. I took the IELTS exam towards the end of high school in December 2019 and scored an overall band score of 7 out of 9. Breaking this down, I got a 7.5 in listening and reading and got a 6.5 in writing and speaking. You don't have to worry about English language proficiency as long as your overall band score is 6.5 or above with no band below 6. For more details, you can head over to English language requirements page on UFT's website to see the English language proficiency tests accepted by UFT and their minimum scores. Though extracurriculars are not as important as your grades, they will certainly distinguish you from all the other applicants as the right extracurriculars help you demonstrate interest in your chosen area of study by showing that you went outside your classroom environment to pursue your interests. On the OUAC website, you are asked to list down the names of all the activities and work experience you engaged in. I mentioned 11 activities that I participated in throughout high school. Let me tell you some of them. First, I was involved in the student council throughout high school. Second, I created and published content on a tech blog to pursue my interest in technology. Third, I was part of the student leadership team for my school's hunger relief project 
in which we raise approximately eighteen thousand dollars to feed eight hundred families every year. And most of my activities involved a lot of volunteering, and so I was able to craft my profile around community and service. What I suggest you to do is to mention activities that you did over a long period of time and that have left an impact on you and your surrounding communities. And these should be activities that you can talk about in your program's supplementary application to show that they can help you succeed in your chosen area of study. So instead of talking about a one week research project unrelated to your program's area, talk about an activity that you consistently engaged in. For example, a regular participation in online hackathons to demonstrate your interest in computer science or something like that. Now, let's talk about another really important part of your UFT application, supplementary application and video interviews. After you apply to your chosen area through OUAC, you will or will not receive a supplementary application or video interview on your join UFT portal depending on your program choice. If you don't know what supplementary application is, it is a form that comprises of several short answer questions where you have to reflect and write on your personal experiences and qualities. The same happens with video interviews where you are shown several questions on screen and you have to answer them live on camera. Also remember that supplementary application and video interviews are very different for different programs. So do check the specifics for your program. But how do you know whether you will be filling a supplementary application or not? The answer is to check your program details before applying. Most arts and science majors do not have a supplementary application, but most applied science and engineering majors do have one. For more details about specific programs, do check the undergraduate programs page on UFT's website. In my case, both UFT Mississauga and UFT Scarborough didn't have supplementary application for computer science. But do remember to craft your story and present your extracurriculars in a way that demonstrates your interest and helps the admission team know your qualities and strengths that will help you succeed in your chosen program. On a final note, I want to say that the application process of Canadian universities can be quite intimidating given that there aren't many helpful resources out there for Canadian university applications. So if you have any doubts or questions, be sure to comment them down below. I'll try my best to answer them all. In the next video, I'll be sharing some of the things that will help you make your UFT application or any other college application stand out. So make sure you subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon to receive the notification of my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye and take care.